part four, the runway tool. If you've been following along from the previous video, we now find ourselves with a freshly created profile and a newly defined airport boundary. This time we're going to explore the runway tool. So simply select runway from the tools on the left or press R on the keyboard to switch to runway mode. When defining a runway, it's often best for us to be in satellite mode to more easily see where the real runway begins. So we'll change to satellite mode now by selecting satellite from the two options near the top left of the map. Now that we can see an overview of the real airport, we will zoom in and locate the start of the runway we wish to define. Here, we will define runway 09 right at Heathrow. It should be noted this runway contains a displaced threshold. This can be seen by the markings with arrows that precede the main runway. And for a displaced threshold runway, we'll find the very edge of the displaced area and left click to place the start point of our runway. A blue dot will appear to show the starting point. Now don't worry if the position isn't perfect, we can adjust this later on. Now we'll move to find the opposite end of our runway. Notice here that the runway does not contain a displaced threshold, but instead contains a stop way, also known as a blast pad. In this case, we will select the true end of the runway, not the end of the blast pad. Again, choosing the center point of the runway threshold and left clicking to place the node, and we're now prompted to name the runway. In this case, the runway is 09 right slash 27 left. We may now select OK and our runway is generated. We're now in runway editing mode. In this mode, the runway appears in a transparent light blue color to help us see the underlying images better. We can adjust our endpoints by clicking and dragging on the small orange dot. On the right side of the screen, our property editor has appeared once again. And for this runway, we wish to add a stopway to the end of 27 left. So we will add a distance in the runway end zone for 27. Under stopway length, a number can be typed in. For this runway, it's 30 meters. And then we can select update properties and our stopway should be added. So proceeding to the other end of the runway. Here we can see our displaced threshold. And for this particular runway, it's a little over 300 meters. So we'll type 305 into the displaced threshold box for runway 09. And again, select update properties to commit these changes and to check everything lines up. Please note that displaced thresholds are calculated from the start and end points inward, whereas stopways are calculated outward from those points. That's because a displaced threshold is still an acceptable area to begin a takeoff roll or use during a landing rollout. But a stopway is only intended as a blast safety zone or an emergency overrun area to protect against runway excursion events and must not be used during regular operations. Once we're happy with our runway, we can repeat the process to define a new one or switch to the select tool that's S on the keyboard and click on an unmarked area of the map to deselect the runway. At this stage, we may wish to select Save Profile from the left menu to ensure our new profile is saved back to the cloud. We should see it appear in Existing Profiles as our currently selected profile. Join us in the next video where we'll explore the taxiway tool.